uh, this is just a session where you can you know do uh, check on how can we use python debugging uh, we have in our course uh, have gone to the pdb uh, debugger that is comes with python but here also what you can do is we can also use leverage the ids we mostly are using two ids in our uh, systems is the pycharm right and also we are using visual studio code okay so our session is so to see that how can we you know debug what are the different options are there in pycharm and others and uh, how we can you know do the debugging for the application that are there okay. basically we're going to be very need to do debugging of any application be python or any other programming language is to figure out uh, finding the root cause of any issues that have been reported or when you are developing we need to better understand the code workflow that is there okay how the you know functions have been called and what the arguments they have been passing around so that we can also do and uh, thereby we can use uh, two ids for doing that so let's see how we can you know do any kind of debugging out here so here we have a simple python application okay and in this python application you know i can run this python application using normal python command this is just a game that is uh, using a library known as arcade so just started the game this is a simple application where you can you know move around your mouse cursor and it will just increase the particular scores that are there right and there are like 50 different points which have been spread across on the screen and you can close the particular thing so normally if i wanted to run my application i can run my application in two modes right as you can see, I can have the run configuration out here, whether we have can run, okay. I can choose to create a edit configuration and here I can add a new application, any Python application that I wanted to monitor, right, that I can put into and then I can choose the particular script that I wanted to do. I can choose this final game or something, okay. Here I can pass parameter, I can choose the debugger, Python interpreter that is there, right? This is coming from my virtual environment that is uh, within the project, okay? And the working directory, et cetera. And any environment variable if I wanted to send out. So that way I can also run this. I can add and multiple files if I wanted to run for my application, standalone script or main application that I can do. Or I can choose from here and then also run that. Alternatively, when I have right, I can you know see whatever you know ports that run configuration that I've added, they will come up here. I can select, I can choose the either option run. That will also run your simple application, right? Or if I wanted to start in a debug mode, I can simply do shift F9 on that particular file or I can press the debug icon, right? And just try to press shift F9. I started this in a debug mode, right? Which is internally using PyDevD and thereby it is running in a particular port and current client and the file they have mentioned. So that way we can, a uh, couple of way we can run using our PyCharm IDE. Okay. Now say, if I'm just simply running this application, right, without the outside this uh, for my ID. So simply I can put Python game dot viewer. So this application is running, this game is started. Now here within the run option, I also have like attached to process. 
so attach to process is also show me what are the you know current python processes that are running in my uh, application right so i can see there is like a game one game two etc those games are there i can try to attach to those particular game okay and then i can see my debugger console is coming up with the process id that is there is uh, 3700 and it's remotely attached with that particular process id and it started uh, looking into that particular debugger okay so if debugger has failed is a timeout so let me do one thing let me just close this let me just see if i you know close all the python application that are there and then i can you know try to see if i can do the remote debugging The Python application is running. Let me just quickly check that. I don't think none of the application is currently running. So let me try to run that first. Let me see. So at the end, I can see my Python exe, which is currently running, and it is the process ID TT252. So let's see if we can, you know, attach to this process or not. So obviously, when I need to attach, I need to choose this particular file. And here I can see this is the all the past files are also there. Okay, and so I need to choose the correct one and see if we get attached or not. If it still don't get attached, what you can do, so what is here? Okay, so the function address, line number this, what error it get? It get that, okay. It's not able to attach, okay, no problem. That one way of doing it, but I think we need to start with some other flag to you know run it, then it can be attached. Okay. So normal option will be that if we don't do the attachment like this, we can you know simply choose the file and from the run configuration, either we can add or we can simply you know run our application like this. Okay, so this is becomes in a debugger mode, debug mode, and normally when you go into debug mode. We have like a debugger. Debugger also shows you the call frame and the variable is currently available in the scope. But these two fields are not going to be, you know, show up unless and until you set up any kind of breakpoints. So here, like you, in this particular code, you have like this mouse motion, right? So whenever the user moves the mouse, this particular code base get activated. And within that particular code base, I can you know see which particular endpoint this mouse movement is, what is the value of x and y. So I can set up a particular breakpoint. When I set up a particular breakpoint, I can click the view breakpoint that is your control shift V. A view breakpoint that is control shift F8. Sorry, control shift F8. If I do that. I can see the list of breakpoints that are there. Out of your normal breakpoint that you find, right? You can find your current breakpoint that you have set up in your application. Apart from that, you have this particular breakpoint setup that is a Python exception breakpoint. So if there is any exception occurs anywhere, it's automatically captured in this breakpoint. Along with that, you can also use certain uh, template render breakpoint you can set up, right? For Django and Jinja 2, as also Jupyter notebooks, you can also put an exception breakpoint there, okay? And this is the breakpoint that I've set up is a Python line breakpoint. So if I click that, it shows me the post snippet where we set up the particular breakpoint. And also there are like options to look into this when i go to enable the conditionally i can enable that particular option and 
also whether I want to be enable this or disable it. And when this particular breakpoint or code block get executed, the execution get paused, it is the application gets suspended and the frames and variable has been populated and that can be viewed by me. Okay. So let us try to move. As I try to move my mouse, so here I can see that the player or the animated characters that is currently in, I can hover over any kind of variables and I can also evaluate their values, which is the current location that particular character do resides. That is also coming in the center X, center Y. Along with that, we can see other value, like what is the collision area in which, what is the, how many, you know, points that particular animated character has hit. He has hit like eight such points. And currently, if you can see, right, uh, he, he has hit anything, so that will come up. So player details are out here. And similarly, this same self object, you can view out here. So you can see the values X and Y that are coming in the parameters. Similarly, DX and DY values you can also get. And also you can see, right, on the my game, the self. What is self? Self is a my game object that has been created out here. It's a my game, which is creating a window. And within that particular window, it's opening up, it's create, it's putting the coins in that particular window, it's placing the user in a certain location. So that particular initial location the player is in, I have not moved into, so this player is out there in this particular location, 5050. That's the detail that we currently see. Now here from here, if I wanted to view the values that of that particular icon, I can again see those values out here, or I can hover over the particular value and I can see that particular value of the cell in inline view as well. Or I can see what is the value that has been currently set. And what is the mouse icon is now going to be placed. I just let forward the execution and the character has been moved out here. As I move the character a little bit out here, then automatically in that particular breakpoint, that particular code has been paused. Okay. Now out here in the console, right? Here you can, you know, print out also values, right? So in the console, you're going to be see that if you wanted to debug the value or if you wanted to write any kind of expressions that you can also do, right? So here I can put like self dot there type dot. If I wanted to see what is the color. Okay. So the color, particular color console that has been come out. And if I want, I can also evaluate certain variable like this box. I call the kill function. That is also I can call. I can also view what is the value. Similarly, I can view for the player what is the current location that I can look into. So this is your debugger console window or script. There you can find the current location as well. And similarly, that is what you can see along with that. You can see any kind of log, any kind of print element because I've added the print element statement that you can also view out here. And when you move to the debugger, now you can see, right, you are on this particular method, correct? Or this particular frame. And within that frame, these are the variable values that are currently enabled. Similarly, if you wanted to say main method, so that is arcade win, but there is no variables are at the present moment are available. Similarly, here you can see the some of the lines are enabled, some of the lines are disabled. The lines are enabled are which are from your current module or your source code, other lines which are from libraries or other places. Okay. So that way I can do that and also I can evaluate certain expression if I wanted to. 
So I just remove the breakpoint. I can let the move forward. This is basically resuming of the program. That is the F9. So we can just simply say F9. Let's move forward. As there is no further breakpoint has been set up, so it is not pause out here. And then I just, you know, moving the character around. Character is now removed out of that. So, okay. So now here you can also see. Let me again rerun this. I can try to run multiple times if I want to. Alternatively, what I can do if I currently you know running that, I will see that there is option it's running. And if I wanted to do any kind of rerun, if I'm making any code changes, okay. For example, here I'm seeing the scores, right? So instead of saying score, I can say your score. That will not going to be reflected out here. So I need to just restart this, rerun and restart. So that I can do using control F5. So thereby our current program get pause and new instance been created. And you can see the particular text has been modified. Similarly, here I can see this expression. If I need to understand what is this expression is and how it is evaluating, I can put a breakpoint around here, okay? Or I can put a breakpoint below to that, whichever in, okay? And as soon as I put the breakpoint, I let it go. So this is comes. I can see here also the value of that particular expression has been displayed. Out here, your score is this. And you can further, you know, see how the value has been set up out here. You can also change the value if you wanted to. Okay. So this is the variable. And also you can put this kind of expression out here. So for example, this is a thing if I wanted to put, if I wanted to put is here a score. Okay. And then in the self object, I have like a score, right? And in the score, I have 0 to D. Okay. Now, if I wanted to execute, I can immediately can see what is the result it will look like. So if I wanted to, before I make any changes, if I wanted to evaluate an expression, I can evaluate out here if I wanted to. And there I can see the particular score or particular value that is there. So that is another way I can do this. Alternatively, what I can do, I can try to watch a certain value or certain expression that have been getting evaluated so that I can you know, easily put these things in a kind of a word statement. And I can you know, monitor this particular value. And then I can you know, move forward and I can see this particular value has been changed or done some changes. So here also what I can do, I can, you know, disable this particular breakpoint if I wanted to. I can disable all the breakpoint. So it will not going to be changed. It will not going to pause or suspend my application. If I again wanted to enable this, I can enable that and the particular breakpoint become activated. Okay. And I can also just evaluate what is the value current score is. So I can simply put what is this score. And here I also get the completion. Okay. So that I can see my score is finally 22. Okay. This one. Now, if I wanted to figure it out, how the when the particular object is there, right, and how the individual points have been spread over on that particular screen, I can also do that. So in this particular application, what I have is, I have, you know, the constructor method. Within the constructor method, here it is basically listing down the coins that are there, right? So if I wanted to say how the coin been append, what's the location the coin been append, what is the coin X and Y has been generated on the runtime, 
because here it is using random random range so which is kind of a, within the boundary that the particular window size has been mentioned okay so within that boundary they have mentioned the window size and then i like to find out which points are generated and all those points have been generated in random like distribute kind and i can put a breakpoint out here so my application or project code again i can run so i have just close that so i get running it and then it got started so as if the constructor gets started now this particular code has come up over here. and i can see my previous expression that is there and i also can see any kind of watch that i've added i wanted to remove i can remove that or else i can duplicate the watch i can right click edit the watch out here i can copy the value or evaluate the expression if i want it so evaluating expression i just you know click out here for any kind of expression i want to evaluate i can put all tape weight in all tape weight i can put any kind of expression that is there self plus score if i put there i don't want it to add to the watch but i wanted to see what is the current expression evaluates to that i can see out here using the evaluation box just like in your expression so it is get enter or you can click on evaluate it get automatically evaluated and you can add the watcher if i wanted to see whether this value has been changed as we are moving through that particular line of code that are there now i hope uh, these are the i can always go back to the my execution code base using show execution point and here i can have like a step over so we know that it just moves to the loop and it's execute the individual line and if i wanted to you know go inside this method i can always do the step into that is f7 right and here it is f8 so if i say f7 then i can you know go inside that particular window command class or any library or type list library right what is basically doing it's uh, having like a slot which is having its own value and then it's one value one stripe object has been picked up and then it's next slot it's finding out the next slot where you're going to place that so it find two slots to be placed into so in that it's looping the value so i can debug this and i can find out how this is going to and i can go inside the methods also as many line i wanted to okay and if i wanted to go back to my execution source code i can you know need to get out of here so i can simply put step out step out and i can jump back to my code base again now when i'm going to say i'm going to step into there's another option is you only can step into into your current code right and uh, you don't need to move into your library so here from here if i you now go back to the particular loop i say step into step into step into but i'm not going inside the random or going inside the function because those are not part of my library so those are the commands that are there i can also close from here along with that what i can do those are the things i can do in terms of a debugging that's your normal uh, you know python code whatever you may have it you can do the same with your django or flux application okay and here i have got one exception okay so when that exception occurs you can see there is a like icon has been changed the exception is a attribute icon sale has no attribute called call list so that particular exception occurs and my application get paused that also you can you know see and you can also see the expression call stack out here in the console now that's about your normal python code that you can debug 
other thing you can also debug is the unit test cases. So here we have unit test, unit test uh, from that particular library. Our class is taking that particular directory. If I want, I can also, you know, debug this test cases just like your normal application. So what I can do, I can right click, I can debug for test. And when I run the particular test, so currently the test are currently is failing, right? Because there is certain unclosed file and I can, you know, so there is, it's trying to find out a file, TTF file, but it's not able to finding that particular file on the site package, anyhow. So then here, if any kind of test got fails, I can see the individual test results that are there. And I can also run the normal test also. Let me try to run this normally. Okay. So all the three tests got failed. Now I can also debug and check why the particular test has been failed so i could find that here the this line the code has failed okay and with height and title that is there and then there is like application y which is the particular code and then they are going inside that attach canvas and then unable to share context. So here we can see the full call tetras, what is the particular area in which this particular code has been failing. So if we wanted to debug this particular line, we can go in and debug that. So let I can also target to debug this particular only test that I wanted to check. We got into here i can step over here there is like error that is happening okay so arcade set back in color that's become amazon and then it has a score in it zero markets five list then arcade type place type then the values has been added then it is going inside the append and then it's going into the stripe list and from there there are like 50 such results are there so if i can put a cursor out here and forward this one there's two there's three four five i can even debug remove the debugger point and I can move forward and I can again check on console. Now I can find that when I run the individual test, it got passed. So maybe uh, when is a particular test that is there, when you're running the parallel test, it is actually failing. And if I wanted to run this parallelly, you know, just single test I'm running, it is actually failed. But when this test I'm running, it is, I think, getting fast. So that way, if I wanted to, I can also check into my individual test cases as well, apart from my normal, uh, you know, Python code. Any question with PyCharm debugging features? Uh, not from my side. Okay. Let's just quickly see uh, if I can. Run the similar kind of a code. out here 
Oops, Visual Studio, can I do that? Let's just quickly check out. So in case of a Visual Studio, then compared to PyCharm, what you need to do, you have to add the launch parameter kind of a thing to start with. I don't have any folder open, so let me try to open a folder. Where we may have Python related code bases. Okay. I think this is it. Okay. So, out here, um, this is my main programming code or main application code, right? Now, if I wanted to debug that, uh, using our python so here we have like a run and debug console so there is no uh, launch json is mentioned so i can create a launch json right and when i say launch json it says uh, what you want to run are you going to run in a django first api flux or pyramid kind of application or you wanted to run a simple Python application. So this is like a Python application. So I choose that. And have to mention the particular file name, correct? And uh, it's going to be like a Python, correct? And I can say it's a Python UI. I can give the launch name out here if I wanted to. Let's see if I can try to launch this or not. Then. I have to give the file name, right? So if I wanted to give the file name, this is the particular file name. So let me just rename and copy the file. Over here, I can go back to the launch configuration out here. And this is the file out here. Any point? Let's see if I can, you know, just simply use the uh, start debugger with the debugger able to find the particular file or not. Let me check. So, yeah. So here it's starting. It's using the Python extension to launch the debugger, but here we have an exception of certain file is looking into but here we can you know see that the particular debugger is working so just like the out here we have four sections here can i add the watcher list what i wanted to watch similarly i can see the frames or the call stack where i see the exception or where is the particular breakpoint is paused right and uh, where that particular model has been initialized so i can navigate to that and also i can you know choose the control the breakpoints whether they are going to be false on unpart exception or race exception which are the other package of ppt or py where you're going to get stop similarly i'm going to be seeing all the variable values that are currently in i can you know move forward if I wanted to do that, I can see the on top, there is like a resume function, step over, step into, step out, you want to relaunch that, or you can close the debugging session. So currently, this application is not running, but yeah, that's how we can, you know, do this. So let me try to change and try to run a different application, package.ppt why this particular file is there okay here i can set the breakpoint same like this okay so i can put package underscore ppt dot py let me put go back in the launch parameters and here i can you know go package underscore ppt dot py this comes under your VS code and this is 
the file. So again, I can go back to my debug and I can press F5. Okay. So here you can see that whatever breakpoint I set up, I have gone to that particular breakpoint. Then I can you know move forward. And it will try to go inside this function, which is going inside out here. And here I can see what are the values that are coming into. So as I move forward, I can see what is the individual value of the path variable, skins, root skin, etc. There. Entity type I can also find source etc value that is there i can put the cursor like normally i can do or i can you know look into the entity type from the variable local variable list that i can find also i can look into that like some google variable list that i can also see so that way i can see this and then i can you know move forward and i can you know check that how it is and it is work similarly out here i have you know put uh, a particular value correct that value is coming when i'm generating the ppt so let me put a breakpoint let me move forward so screen append right so where the skin got appended move forward so it is creating a presentation so out here we have a screen we have slide okay now as i created a slide i can see the particular word variable now have a value okay and if i wanted to expand it further i can you know see the internal value that is there and i can also pull up this to make it bigger so, and i can see what is the name title of the slide what is the rotation slide id shape id objects etc are there which location that is there and i can also move in and see what is if there is having any inside any particular objects are there as soon as the more object will be added this is get modified and whichever get things get modified that is also highlighted out here okay. then when it's going outside the scope this uh, watch variable is not able to view it so that way you can you know do both you can use either of the id whichever you have currently you can set up the launch json which is kind of addition step compared to python but yeah you can do the same operation more or less you can look into the stacks you can look into breakpoints you can debug that you can look into the values that are there and you can also step over the breakpoint that's there that's more or less how can you work with the two IDs. Uh, do you guys have any further question on this? Um, I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, sorry, uh, I am uh, joining late due to my due uh, electricity problem. So, can I get the recording? Uh, yeah. Let's start. Yeah, I can share this recording. Oh, thank you. Oh. There is no further question. Uh, hello, Sharish. Yeah, actually, uh, how to evaluate the data in uh, VS Code uh, like PyCharm? Yeah, so in the PyCharm, if you wanted to evaluate the data, you can uh, also add a watcher expression. As soon as you add the watcher expression within the scope, is that particular expression makes any value, you can also see that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. 
Any other questions? No. Okay. So let me pause the screen sharing for now. Stop the recording.